I, I'm going to say, in my opinion, it's going to delete some of the, the other combinations. If I was racing Pro Mod competitively again, I would definitely choose this. I don't see how um, it can't really make a nitrous or even a roots uh, supercharger system almost extinct. Hey everybody, Tim McCamus out in the shop looking at this uh, montage of billet aluminum bullshit up here in front of this engine. So unless you're dead or been living under a rock for the last uh, year and a half or so, you've probably heard the Pro Charger name bannered around the racetrack. These, uh, that's what we're looking at here. This is a, um, this is a Pro Charger setup and it's currently mounted on the front of this uh, AJ Hemi. So I'm gonna give you a little outline of what this is and what it's all about and a few highlights of uh, what this thing is. So <clears throat> basically, you know, it looks like a turbo housing, but this is what's, uh, it's called a centrifugal supercharger, okay? So this is a supercharger, it's driven by the crankshaft. So this is gonna hook up directly in line where like a turbo, it's gonna have two pieces. The turbo's gonna have a piece like this, which is the, uh, the charge side, the air charge side. It's gonna have an impeller in here, but then on the other side, it's gonna have a similar impeller that the exhaust spins. So it's piped into the headers, and the exhaust drives this shaft and impeller on one side, which is the hot side of the turbo, and then on the charge tube side, you get boost, okay? This is a centrifugal supercharger, so it is connected by this drive mechanism to the front of the crankshaft. So there's going to be a hub up here and then an adapter, and then it goes onto this spline shaft here, and then if you turn this thing, all this shit spins. So there's a gearbox here. There's a gearbox here. One of the things you're able to do is to change the ratio in this thing by changing the gear sets in it. So that gives you more overdrive and less overdrive. And This is the new hot item in drag racing right now even though it's been around for a long long time this is not new okay pro charger has been around for many many years even as much as uh five or six years ago they really started they started to pop up in um uh, in a lot of top dragster stuff which is uh um, guys were wanting to get away from they wanted something fast but nitrous you know they were running nitrous to go fast but it's a pain in the ass it's got you got to mess with the bottles, you got to mess with the jetting, you got to mess with the fuel pressure, and then there's always some bullshit going wrong with it. So they still wanted to bracket race. So this was a really legit combination to put on these engines and get some good power out of them without messing with all the nitrous stuff. So it's nothing new. This isn't just didn't get invented in the last 18 months, but hear everybody talk, you'd think it had. So. Um, Prochar has been in business for a long time. They do a nice job on this stuff. Um, this is going to be, this combination here is some of the latest technology that's out. And um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to rotate all this with the crankshaft and we're going to produce compressed air out of this outlet and into the manifold. So we're going to take, we're going we're to pull air in here and it's going to be spun by that impeller and pushed out of here into a charge tube into the manifold boost fuel injected big power okay now this is obviously a new chassis so we're setting this all up um, this little uh, accessory drive here it uh, it's mounted off the uh, the outside of this gearbox drive and what this is going to do is it'll drive a fuel pump a mechanical fuel pump on this side so this clamp ring is similar to what's on the uh, supercharged engines now with a quick clamp and then on the back side you can put an oil pump um, this one's got an oil pump driven off of the mag drive but um, you can put an oil pump on this side fuel pump on this side so basically what we're going to do is once we start this up through this gear multiplication we're going to spin the shit out of this impeller here and we're going to put some boost through this tube put some fuel with it haul ass okay so to give you an idea um, we've done a, a bunch of these conversions and uh, we've, we've converted existing cars we've done new builds too so some of the guys that have had cars that were only a year or two old we've converted them over to a pro charger but they're gonna see um, so they can see impeller shaft speeds 
um, over 70,000 here. So, so this little impeller is humping in here and it is making a lot of boost. We recently did a couple Pro Charger conversions for um, one of our good friends, uh, Mr. Brian Hard. He's got two cars and he was, uh, he was running a Roots supercharged Hemi. Switched over to a Noonan engine, which is just a phenomenal piece of uh, hardware, and uh, Pro Charger drives. So when you do that, there's a lot of things that have to be done. So we brought the cars in here, we basically stripped everything out of the front, reconfigured the cars from the firewall forward, and they went out and hauled ass with these things immediately. I mean, one of their cars at the last event this year uh, ran uh, 552 at uh, over 259 miles an hour. So, I mean, just incredibly fast. I mean, these guys, these guys are fast. I mean, they were fast with the root stuff, but they are really fast with this. And they picked this up. They've got uh, Haltech systems on there running the fuel injection and engine management, and they are just not having any troubles with them. I mean, they're doing really good. The engines are in good shape and this stuff is really durable. Just like anything else, this stuff is evolving faster than they can make parts for it. So there's changes coming all the time. But if you're gonna switch over to something like this, you have to consider a lot of things. Number one, do you have room to hang all this garbage off the front of the engine? Because it takes up a lot of space. So we still gotta put fuel and oil tanks up here. Um, and one of the big things is um, the rack position. So you can see where this rack's mounted. I mean, it has to be moved back. You have to, the rack can't be in the normal location. So the racks are normally up about five or six inches farther forward than they are right now. And that was really just to give us room to get everything in and out of the car. So um, they, so it wasn't in the way if you're pulling the engine out. Well, now all this stuff unbolts really easily. So you don't have a lot of this hanging on it when you pull the engine out. But if you're gonna do this on an existing car, you're gonna have to deal with the rack, which is the biggest pain in the ass of the whole part, is trying to get that thing finagled underneath there. And if you can see, there ain't a whole lot of room. I mean, that thing just barely slides underneath uh, that uh, mounting system. Um, so instead of our tie rod tubes kind of angling back to the steering arm, they're almost gonna be straight in line, which is not a problem. It works perfectly that way. Basically, you have to strip this thing down to the bare frame rails and start over. But the end result is a really good combination. It's very, very durable, very easy to work on. I mean, take a, if you've ever taken a, a root supercharger off of a, off an engine, I mean, those things are, you know, it takes two guys to lift those up. You use one of our blower lift tools. It still takes two guys to pick that thing up off there and set it down. But this thing you can pop off. One guy can pick that up easily. So. Again, this is a this is this is a really good combination, and it, it, and if you haven't heard of it until recently, you know a lot of guys think, "Wow, where did this stuff come from?" Well, it has been around a long, long time, but it's also now that the demand is high for it, it's getting a lot of revisions, a lot of updates, a lot of changes. I mean, this is a lot. This is a big unit here, and uh, they used to be considerably smaller than this, but this is going to be very, very prevalent next year because uh, at the end of this season, NHRA decided to allow them to, um, to run in Pro Mod next year. They did a, a little experimental deal at Indy this year where they let a couple of the cars run just to kind of get a baseline. Um, but they are gonna allow this. So, you know, again, if you already you aren't confused enough by uh, Pro Mod racing, you know, with all the different power adders and all the different weight brakes and all the different rules, they're gonna throw another one in there. So be a whole much other bullshit to go with that. But, uh, you know, like uh, um, in, the, in the case of uh, Brian Hard, it made the racing enjoyable again. They didn't have, I mean, they, they, were, they were having a lot of maintenance uh, issues before with their engine, and, and, uh, but now they're, um, there's just less work. It's just less, um, um, less time you're spent uh, working on some of the engine stuff. So it's a good combination. It's... Um, it's obviously you can see this is not something that's a cheap move to make. I mean, this is going to be a substantial investment to switch a car over or even to build one from from scratch. But it is very nice. And um, so far, uh, we haven't seen a lot of downside to it. I mean, it's um, it's it's proven itself to be uh, a very good choice for a lot of guys. And uh, I'm going to say that next year you're going to see these things everywhere because uh, they are um, really wasn't a lot of places to race them competitively um, until next year. They weren't, you know, they weren't, they haven't been allowed in, in, 
in any tripromine. And this this stuff is is just um, really been kind of squeaking out this year in 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 this fashion, anyway, at least in this big stuff. So. Um, Check it out. Look at them online. There's a bunch of videos and stuff you can watch as some of these ProCharger guys running. And uh, this is uh, this thing's going to be around for a long time, and uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, I, I'm going to say in my opinion, it's going to it's going to delete some of the the other combinations. I don't know that uh, if I was racing ProMod competitively again, I would definitely choose this. I don't see how uh, it can't really make. Uh, nitrous or even a roots uh, supercharger system almost extinct. Um, I think in a couple years you're going to see uh, turbos and pro chargers in, in pro mod. That's what, that's what I think. I think the nitrous stuff, uh, there'll be a few guys hanging on um, just because, um, but um, roots guys, that uh, the roots supercharged guys, they're going to see, you know, you don't have to do that much to it. You don't have to strip the blower every couple of runs. You don't have to have one of these high dollar, expensive, overpriced fucking superchargers either. These are all the same. Everyone's the same. So now if you're going to run competitively in NHRE in, in, uh, in, with a supercharged combination, with a root supercharger, you got to have the tricked out, baddest, flowed inlets, all kinds of crazy, I mean, just crazy shit, crazy expensive superchargers to run in NHRE Pro Mod. This stuff's all the same. You buy you buy one from Procharger, you get the same one the next guy's got, and um, should make it a lot more interesting. So check it out. Check it out online. Do a little research. Maybe it's a good combination for you. If you got any questions on any of this stuff, don't hesitate to give us a call.